We are certainly concerned by uh, the speed with which the Taliban has been moving. Um, and um, as we've said from the very beginning, uh, that uh, this is a, and it still is, uh, a, a moment for Afghan national security and defense forces as well as their political leadership. No outcome has to be inevitable here. That was Pentagon Press Secretary John Kirby just a couple hours ago, sticking largely to the president's message there on Afghanistan, as the president articulated earlier this week, that this is now in the hands of the Afghan leaders. Kirby speaking today as the U.S. has announced that 3,000 troops will head to Kabul to begin evacuations of the U.S. embassy and U.S. citizens in the capital. The evacuation is beginning as the Taliban continue to take provincial capitals across the country quickly. Joining our conversation is the Department of Defense Press Secretary John Kirby. It's a pleasure to get to talk to you. Thank you for spending some time with us. Thank you. Tell us what's happening on the ground right now. What do you know that we don't? <laughs> well, I mean, clearly, you and I've, I've been watching, Nicole, you guys have been covering the uh, the advances that the Taliban continue to make here. The situation in Afghanistan continues to deteriorate from a security perspective, which is one of the reasons why, uh, mindful of that uh, and in prudent planning, uh, we're going to here at the Defense Department help our State Department colleagues as they now begin to draw down some of their civilian uh, personnel in, in Kabul. Uh, so we're watching this very, very closely. And, and we continue had to have the authorities. We continue to have the capabilities to assist the Afghan forces in the field through airstrikes where and when feasible. So that's also continuing. Will they be used, though, just to help get everybody down what's been described as the longest road to the airport? Or will they be used to help them retake some of the provinces they've lost? The forces that we're flowing in now, the 3,000 or so, and most of them should be in place by the end of, by the end of this weekend, are really going with a very narrow focus, very narrow mission, and that is to safeguard the drawdown of uh, our civilian personnel in Kabul and to help uh, with the application process, to help to help facilitate the transportation of special immigrant visa applicants as they also uh, begin to process out of the country. That's the narrow focus. It's really about safeguarding uh, both the, the people there uh, at the airport and also our operations at the airport. In your briefing today, you described the speed with which the Taliban is taking over. And we've got a map at how much territory they've actually taken over is concerning. Is that because the intelligence didn't predict it or why, why is that concerning? It's concerning because uh, for two reasons. One, I mean, th there is an element of time here. Uh, and I mentioned that earlier, the speed with which they're doing it. Uh, certainly that uh, that is deeply concerning. Uh, but also we're concerned because uh, we're not seeing the level of resistance out of the Afghan national security forces uh, that would be that you would expect to see, uh, given uh, the advances that the Taliban are, are making. So it's 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 twofold. But I'll tell you, Nicole, it's not like we weren't watching this. It's not like we weren't aware of this. I mean, even before the Biden administration took office, the Taliban was making advances. Certainly that has accelerated in recent weeks. We're not arguing against that. But it's not like we haven't been mindful of that, been watching that and been preparing for that. I talked about today this plan to send these 3000 troops in. Those plans weren't just uh, created in the last 48 hours. We've been contingency planning for a lot of potential outcomes here in Afghanistan for a long time. So we've been mindful of this. When did when did the planning start to get all of our interpreters out? They seem extremely anxious that there won't be time to get them and their families to safety. Well, we've already moved. Uh, we've already moved uh, uh, several thousand out of the country. Uh, we know uh, that there are m uh, many thousands more with families uh, that are going to be applying for the process to get out. We are prepared to help with that. I talked about that earlier today. We'll be able to move thousands of people out of uh, Hamid Karzai International Airport. Once we get the, the operation up and going, we'll be able to do that. Uh, and the planning for this uh, goes back many, many weeks. Uh, we have, we know, but particularly here at the Defense Department, that we have a sacred moral obligation to help those who have helped us. Uh, and we're not walking away from that. You know, you use the word moral obligation. A lot of people, including one of your colleagues at the State Department, feels like we've abandoned our moral obligation and commitments that we've made to Afghan women and girls. How do you feel personally? You've worked on these issues a long time. I've been in Afghanistan myself. I did a short stint there as well. And uh, I think, you know, a lot of people here at the Defense Department, uh, you know, 
feel strongly about uh, the service that we all rendered in Afghanistan. There was a purpose to go, uh, and that purpose was to make sure that Afghanistan couldn't be a safe haven uh, for attacks upon the homeland. And if you look back 20 years now, we're heading into the 20th anniversary of 9-11, and there hasn't been one, certainly not one of that scale, certainly not one emanating from Afghanistan. And the president had to make some tough decisions, as all commander in chiefs have to do. Uh, And one of them is to make sure that we can't let Afghanistan be a safe haven again. And how do you do that uh, without perpetuating another 20 years of war? Because after 20 years of war, uh, there's only so much uh, progress that you can can facilitate with respect to that. And the president made a tough decision that uh, that it was time to end this war. And he, by the way, you know, he inherited a May 1st deadline that he very smartly tried to extend so that we could make sure that our drawdown was done in a safe and orderly way. But we remain committed to the future of Afghanistan. We remain committed to a political settlement. We, we still think there's space and time for that to occur. And we certainly remain committed to a bilateral relationship with Afghan forces that, while, yes, it's not on the ground, is not going to be less fulsome or less comprehensive from over the horizon. What is the message today to the veterans of the war in Afghanistan as they see the Taliban, as you said, in a concerning, with concerning speed, retake the country that they fought for 20 years to make sure could not become a safe haven to plan another 9-11? You know what? I've learned a lot. I'm a veteran myself, and uh, and I will not speak for all veterans. I will not do that. They uh, each uh, each veteran of this war um, isn't. They're entitled to their own views and their own opinions, their own memories of it, uh, and how they want to process uh, the, the end of this war for the United States. Uh, and I want to respect that. Uh, what I can tell you is the the goal to go in there to prevent Afghanistan from becoming a safe haven. Uh, We were able to do that over the last 20 years. Yes, there was great progress made, and now the Afghans have an opportunity. They have an opportunity after 20 years to come together to lead. This is really going to be about leadership, and whatever the outcomes are, Nicole, and they're not inevitable, none of them right now, whatever they are, we're going to look back on it and know that leadership, political and military, military leadership by the Afghans themselves, that's what made the difference. 